attention. The movie guys love movies. Any comments made about a one-eyed monster wreaking havoc at a major university are purely for entertainment purposes only. Isn't that right, Jerry Sandusky? Uh, see? <laughs> see what we did there? See what we did there? One-eyed monster. So we got that joke done. <laughs> so, yeah. so we're done with Monsters University then. I saw what you did there. You made it gross. Or we're done with Jerry Sandusky again. How many times can we be done with Jerry Sandusky? Well, you know, he's just so ripe for the picking. The gift uh, that keeps on giving. It was... No pun intended. I don't know if you can say ripe for the picking. There's a lot of things you can't say, really. <laughs> we managed to make a G movie disgusting. Thank Welcome you. to the... Well, that's what we do. Welcome <laughs> to the movie that's showcast, everybody. <laughs> Part of the vast and sprawling movie guy's empire, and the one true currency in this bankrupt world is what you share with someone else when you're uncool. You know that, what, what that's from? that from? No. It's almost famous. <gasps> uh-huh. You've reached ground zero for all things movies and comedy. We bring the two together right here on our show every week with rants, sketches, previews, characters, jokes, bits, special guests, and more. You can expect that in the next hour or so as we look at all the newest releases in theaters as we broadcast live from the Admirals Club right here in beautiful Burbank, California. You can catch the show on iTunes and SoundCloud, and if you'd like to see the show, it's a video podcast as well. If you're one of those people who just puts on YouTube and lets it play all day, you can hear us uh, you, over there and at themovieguys.net. Search us. We come right up. I'm Paul Preston here with Karen Volpe, Adam Witt, and Lee Caius. Later in the show, we'll be previewing the movie I want to keep calling Attack Force Z. It's World War Z. Attack Force Z is an older that movie. That was a later, great cartoon as a kid, Attack Force Z. Transor Z. <laughs> oh, sorry. Zardoz, anyone? G-Force, that's what And later our guest is writer, actor, director, multi-hyphenate Mitch Rouse. But first... Hey. There's even a hyphenate and multi-hyphenate. Yeah, imagine you! Imagine a university. Where I can be unique. In a family of thousands. Where I can love to learn. And learn what I love. James B. Sullivan. I'm gonna be a scarer! Will the latest sequel from The Great Minds of Pixar be the next Toy Story 3 or the next Cars 2? Lee and I will tell you what we think and what you can expect. Let's do this. Adam, you can scrap your script idea for Monster Frat. Pixar's beat you to the punch. Ah, shit. Here comes Monsters University, the prequel to Monsters, Inc. Aye, aye, aye! See, because he's got... One eye is the thing. <clears throat> Thanks, Paul. Okay. Get ready to be scared stupider than Ernest because the monsters of Monsters, Inc. are back to tell you the backstory you never wondered about. <laughs> the original Monsters, Inc. grossed $562 million worldwide, and it got re-released in 3D last December. So, where else can you go with a franchise? Backwards. And because it's a prequel, this promises to be the underworld rise of the lichens of Monsters, Inc. movies. Back are the voices of Billy Crystal and John Goodman, the Tom Hanks and Tim Allen of Pixar movies that aren't Toy Story. <laughs> they reprise their roles as Mike Wazowski and Sully, who in this prequel are only amateur scarers, barely able to get a child to wet himself. You see, monsters go to university to learn how to scare the pants off little children. The same reason priests go to seminary. But monsters of no particular <laughs> denomination go to Monsters <laughs> University, which is like Hogwarts for people with odd numbers of eyes. At Monsters University, creatures learn new, innovative ways to scare, like telling people that Honey Boo Boo has been renewed for another season. And as the old saying goes, those who can, scare. Those who can't, direct the happening. But the university is shut down when children's rights groups discover the inhumane conditions that toddlers are kept in, while monsters experiment on them to find out what kids are scared of. Monsters University answers the same question answered in the first movie, Monsters, Inc., which was, where do monsters come from? Well, as it turns out, monsters are even more like real people than we thought. Because before they're doomed to a life of middle management, stale wages, boring work, little chance for advancement, and plagued by bosses looking to undercut them at every turn, they drown themselves in student loan debt. Uh, yes. like, I'm a diehard Pixar fan. Every, every time we preview a Pixar film, I'm remind, I remind everybody, this company is amazing at really nailing the concept of the G movie. It's G-rated, and that's for all audiences, not just for kids. Pixar nails that. But they have their work cut out for them here. Will kids understand the concept of college? And will anyone over the age of 18 enjoy this without traditional partying, puking, and punching of kegs and nuts? (laughs) Seriously, does anyone want to go see a college film that's rated G? We'll see. Or at least I will. So there you go. Yeah, you you bring up a good point. I'm going to say there's not going to be any uh, tits in that movie. That's what you get in the college movies. Lots of titties and beard. Well, I did see G-Spot the movie. 
Oh, yes. But that, 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 that had a lot of what you were looking for there, Paul. Yeah. You see, that's the exact opposite of what... So, it's a college movie, but without all that normal sex and drugs and rock and roll. Right, it's not Van Wilder. Wait a minute. Mm. I went to see G-Spot, the movie, but I couldn't find it. <laughs> There you go. Oh my take God. That. It took me a while. <laughs> there you go. Couldn't Nailed find it. it. You keep writing, honey. You just put that down and I'm keep go. going. I'm going to make a hash mark next <laughs> to your name for that one. There we go. Couldn't find the theater it was playing in. <laughs> oh, go. my God. Too much information about Lee's sex life right there. I think that's. Uh, I think he's making it all up. Yeah. 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 Oh, you guys Fake are all sticking together. I don't know. I got to believe it. It's a big lie. There's no such thing as the cheese spot. Fuck you guys. Oh, okay. Right. Unless you all mean right. the bar in Sherman Oaks. Yeah. That I found. <laughs> that I know exactly how to get to. Now, am I the guy who, uh, I'm, I want to see this, because oh, it's Pixar. It. Yeah. Now, granted, see they're not it. on the greatest streak right now. Cars 2 was their worst film. And Brave was so-so, still won the that. Oscar. So, I don't know. This, what this did it win an Oscar for? Oh, animated best film. Best animated yeah. film. Yeah. It's the category that. they invented for Pixar. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then they didn't win the first one. No. <laughs> it was invented for them, and Monsters, Inc. came out, and yeah. Shrek won best They probably best had to do that, film. though, because, you know, it would look like favoritism. I love that for the very first animated uh, Oscars, Jimmy Neutron got nominated. Yeah. You're like, oh, yeah. you've created a category that allows almost everything made in a year if you're going to fill out the category. Right. The thing that Beauty and the Beast would have won, well, we should create a category so uh, Jimmy Neutron yeah, can that, be that, that is, should have won. That is so Oscars because, the, you know, like the, so many uh, actors win the Apology Award like, hey, we know you were better in Godfather or Godfather 2, <laughs> yeah. but here's one percent of a woman. You know, like, <laughs> but, you know, uh, but... Loved you in Cool Hand, Luke. You were amazing at Butch Cassidy, but enjoy your color of money, Oscar. Yeah. yeah. They wait until a, a, gr a perfect opportunity to give a, a best picture to Beauty and the Beast, and then they create an entire category in that sort of Oscar's apology way. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the Academy gets it right most of the time. Russell Crowe should, for example, Russell Crowe should have an Oscar. Not for Gladiator, but he should have one. Yeah. He's got one. Yeah, he should have it for The Insider. Yeah, exactly. I so agree. is that getting Absolutely. it right, though? Well, at the end of the day, you look at the scoreboard. Russell Crowe won. Yes. Yeah, at the go. end of the day, I suppose. <laughs> Russell Crowe wins. We all win. I just, <laughs> like, <laughs> Uncle used to say that. I just saw the uh, Monsters, Inc. I just saw that first one just for, uh, recently for the first time. Yeah, that's a great film. Yeah. The first one is very, very good. Very clever. That's Pete Doctor. Pete Doctor went on to make Up, which is my favorite my Pixar favorite. movie. Never that seen movie. it. Movie Jail? Oh, oh yes. Eh. I have not Come seen on. Up. I have not seen up. I don't you know if that puts you in movie jail uh, simply because maybe not uh, not enough time has passed. Oh, you know, it's like you haven't seen Toy Story, but Up is still four oh, years old. Up, I mean, up, all you have uh, to do Toy is Story. see four yeah. minutes of Up, and if you don't cry, you're a heartless bastard. The story oh, of Up, I mean, I've been told that. the story of that movie. <laughs> that it can't. I mean, that, that word. Who comes up with that? There is no movie that's ever been made movie. that is like Up remotely like no, it. What's it about? Well. It's about an old man who adventures, who goes on an adventure by tying balloons to his house so we can right. go to South America. Oh, that He's joined by tired. a young... <laughs> exactly. Oh, where they again. meet this bird, that and this guy has he dogs did. with collars that make him talk. Him, Doug? And he, yeah, they fly a blimper. I mean, it's just, if you pitch that and you were a schmuck, you're not but getting that made. the idea of tying balloons to a lawn chair or your house or whatever is very childlike, and much like the Monsters in the Closet, which is where Monsters, Inc. comes from, yeah, that's, what, that's what Pixar did really well, was yeah. take something that we all kind of know, it's kind of a thing, and then give it this, like, whole life. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Pete Docter made both those films. He's not back to direct this one, so I hope uh. for good things. But, uh, you know, pretty much, you put anybody in there and they're going to be great. I've had this conversation with Adam. How do you direct? I'm sure you do, and I'm sure it's a skill, but how do you direct a cartoon? I'm asking. Uh, well, this is not you, rhetorical. That's a good question. That no, no. That's question. something I've never I, done. I, I, no, hold can, only, on. I <laughs> can only imagine you'd have <clears throat> ultimate control. Because with actors, there's only so many. Or do you just hand it to a guy that draws and goes, "Make it, make this happen." Uh, I guess. I need a guy to walk across the street and an anvil falls it's on his head. Kind of visual Boom. effects guys work. That's, right? We had this argument with uh, Guillermo del Toro's uh, Pacific Rim, and I said, "Well, how do you direct a bunch of fake robots fighting fake monsters? You just give it to the animation guy and go, fake robots fight fake monsters, make it look cool.'" You know what? That brings us to a good point because we just saw Superman, and I'm not giving anything away, but uh, he flies. He, he flies, and at the end, he flies. He flies cute. at the end. Anyway, but there's a point where uh, so much villainy. fighting is happening. Shut up. 
there's so much fighting going on. There's fighting and crawling and then fighting from a different direction. And then there's flying and fighting and fighting into something else. Then you go halfway across the world and you fight. And it went on for so you throw long. throw some fucking into that list and you get yourself a movie. <laughs> it went on. There, there should have been more fucking. G-spot Not the enough. movie. That's what you like. Too much fighting. It went on a little too long. But I said to Paul, how do you put that on paper? Like, do you just go, okay, then they fight and then they turn upside down and then fight. Paul's I, like, no, just then they fight. I'm not arguing that somebody. there's a skill. I just would like to know what oh, it is. Yeah, well, that's uh, Jackie Chan with his movies. You'll be going through the script, and I may have said this on the show before. And eventually, there's one page that just says Jackie Chan fight scene, <laughs> and okay, on the set they get Superman that shit done, and they get back scene. to the next page where there's dialogue. <laughs> All right. You were talking about the script, but there was a lot of paper spent on that fight scene. I got to tell you, there's a lot of just fight scene. Just different forms of paper. Yeah. Yeah. There's mostly a lot. mostly budgets for effects houses. Yeah. <laughs> So it was a lot of spreadsheets, okay. is what you're saying? A lot of calculations went into that fight scene. A lot of scene. math guys. Yeah. A lot of math guys behind that brawny fight scene, more than you would think. You think it's all muscle, and there's brainy guys it's behind it, making guys. it happen. Yeah, it's amazing. All right, well, Monsters University sounds a bit like a state school, doesn't it? <laughs> Everyone yeah. knows that Frighteners College is where all oh, the smaller yeah, monsters very, go. Very prestigious. But you probably weren't aware that there were many different levels of monster post-high school education you could achieve. I was not aware. There is even a Monsters University of Phoenix online. <laughs> oh, how perfect. Of course. <laughs> no, it's pretty easy if you're a monster to enroll. In fact, you, l- l- all right, let's call the hotline here and oh, uh, see let's just what classes what are offered. Paul, you have that number handy? I have of that number handy. Of course he does. Let me just oh, ring it up here and we'll call That's Monsters great. University of Phoenix. We're going to register right now for class. Yes, we're getting you out of here. <laughs> <laughs> see which one of these you want to take. Oh. That's some hold music. Mm. Sounds a lot like the reality company. Hello, and welcome to Monsters University of Phoenix, providing working monsters with our patented higher fright education at convenient class times. Enroll now, and you can take part in the following courses. Fire breathing for asthmatics, castle management, haunted VCR repair, mad scientist billing specialist, blood stain removal, possessed vehicle repair, children's underwear dry cleaning, Fang orthodontia, huh? spectral makeup artist, cosmetology for ghosts, werewolf grooming, auto collision instigation, post Godzilla civil re engineering, sodal arts, bathroom fixture exorcism, flesh eating culinary arts, chiropractic for skeletons, blood tasting, and day spa manager. With degree programs at the Associate, Bachelor's, Master's, and PhD levels, we provide room to grow. Press one to be put through to a customer service barbarian. Paul, I've always wanted what to be. Were the I hung up. I hung up. The lyrics are yeah. like something music. No holiday for strings. Oh, it's oh, lovely. Yeah. Well, I'm sure they've given it some sort of monster name. Oh. <laughs> well, I, I got to be honest. Holiday for strings is that the one from Platoon? <laughs> that would have made that scene yeah. completely yes, different. Yes, it would have been sad. <laughs> it's a dodgy Horribly sad. Dodgy. Yes. Yeah. That uh, day spa program sounds interesting. I yeah, gotta be, uh, that seems to be like something you. you'd be a part of. I think, uh, yeah. yeah. Think well, it could turning. be worse. could be this. Teaching typewriter maintenance at the Rocco Colombo School for Women. <laughs> Thank you for that. Your <laughs> random, uh, gee, there's a random few good men quote. <laughs> there you go. Who could have brought that on? I, uh, I have that on my <laughs> list of movies to see. I haven't seen a few good men. Uh, bro, yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, you've got to watch it with, with Lee for sure. Or I could just well, oh, do the movie for you right now. <laughs> no, no, okay. good. No, no, no. I, and I he have, could. I have that on there with Midnight Run. Oh, oh yes. Oh, we're going to see the shit out of that. Absolutely. All right, All right Karen, we'll put the phone down because it's your so turn. My turn. Uh, it's your thing, right? We're going to loosen right. things up with a fun segment we like to do here every week and go to Karen for her weekly look at the birthdays of those who make the movies. Karen? <laughs> Off our week of birthdays with Nicole Kidman, who turns 45, but can play anywhere from pale to clear. That wasn't supposed to be a Scientology <laughs> reference. It just sort of happened. Uh, All right. I get it now. I know. It happened later. It was very exciting <laughs> for me. While Kidman was married to actor Tom Cruise, they adopted two children, but have since divorced. She's now married to country music star and fellow Aussie Keith Urban and have two biological children. Did hmm. not know that. Yes, apparently all of her baby-making plumbing is working after all. You just have to have sex with her. Easy, easy. What? I know where you're going with this. Where was I going? <laughs> Speaking of having sex, everyone's favorite pinup girl Meryl Streep turns 63. <laughs> but she can play anywhere from any part she wants. The rest of Hollywood can suck on her scraps. IMDb writes about Streep. Considered by many movie reviewers to be the greatest living female actress, Meryl Streep has been nominated for the Academy Award an astonishing 17 times. 
and has won it three times. Anyone else who even thinks that they are an actor should just give up and sit the fuck down. Done and done. That is from IMDb, so we know Verbatim. That they yeah. know what they're talking about. Wait, they about. wrote, sit the fuck down? Yes. <laughs> they said, just give up and go IMDb. back to Kansas. <laughs> Sincerely, the staff of IMDb. <laughs> <laughs> and next up on the birthday parade is another talented actress, Frances McDormand, who turns 55 but can play anywhere from, oh yeah, sure, you betcha, to <laughs> rock stars have kidnapped my son. Frances is just another Hollywood actress who's made good use of the casting couch by sleeping with the director to get a role. Floozy. <laughs> floozy. Yes, she's so floozy. That's a word I haven't heard. In- yeah, Frances McDormand. And finally, happy birthday to Monsters. You drink Inc. scotch, you say floozy. <laughs> <laughs> she is so not a floozy. If you drink oh, booze, you I say floozy. Her. Anyway, we're going to say happy birthday to John Goodman, who did voice out work yes. for Monsters, Inc., who turned 60 but can play anywhere from loving husband every girl wished she had to super great best friend every dude wished he had. <laughs> I first saw, now this is true, I first saw John on Broadway when he played Pappy in Huckleberry Finn. You call him John? John, John and I go way back. Personal friend of I yours. saw Mr. Goodman <laughs> on Broadway. Just and I was sitting front row and center. And I was this like little 16 year old. I was all excited. And he's up there cussing and spitting and carrying on and running around. As he's want to. As do. he wants to. Yeah. Huck Finn's dad. Unpleasant character. Oh my God. Scared the crap out of me. And I got to tell you that he was the first celebrity that has ever spit on me. True story. <laughs> well, not the last, but the first, right? But, right, yeah, yeah well, okay. you know, there's others, but that was totally different. Important <laughs> distinction to make. But I'd like to say happy birthday to all of those wonderful celebrities. Thank you very much. Happy, happy birthday, birthday, Hollywood. Thank you, Karen. I've been in Hollywood long enough to have a list of celebrities who have spit on me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a little jealous. <laughs> you want to get on that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, you know, that the number of celebrities who spit on you and the number of jobs you have go... Yeah. Yeah. Well, forget it. Shut up. I don't even know what I'm saying there. All right. Uh, Thanks, Karen. Now on to a film uh, about the undead who will never stop having birthdays. And this time, there's an A-list actor at the top. Brad. Yes. Just when you... I saw that written on the paper. Just when you thought it was safe to go back to the movies. just written parentheses in zombie. Brad. I didn't know why it was so long. Now I know. Just when you thought it was safe to go back to the movies for a rollicking, fun summer adventure, the world is going to end again. It's World War Z. After 25 of these World War movies, World War Z is finally here to wrap up the zombie genre. Right? I mean, this is it, right? I mean, it has got to be it for the zombie genre. Paul, Z is for zombie, and that's good enough for me. In Hollywood, more is always more. And much like Piranha 3 Double D, World War Z ups the ante to the extreme, except with zombies instead of tits. That's right. This movie, this movie has everything. Brad Pitt, zombies. Well, it's got Brad Pitt and zombies, so there you go. You know, with their slow lumbering style, traditionally zombies have been more of a threat to paraplegics and hastily boarded up farmhouses. But World War Z (laughs) takes it to the next level by having zombies be faster than Usain Bolt and quick enough to catch an Usain Bolt reference. No longer slogging slowly towards you in manageable groups of ten, the zombies of World War Z attack by the thousands, making all other zombie movies look like movies with just a few zombies. (laughs) Much like a Kennedy... Much like Kennedy. The only way to stop them is to shoot them in the head. But with millions of heads, who can stop them all? Unless they invent an atomic bomb that also destroys the head. But can they? Oh, spoiler alert. World War Z takes place in the world. Mm. In another innovation, the zombie attacks that used to be confined to Pittsburgh have gone global. It's a zombie invasion for the Twitter generation. Hashtag, I can has brains is. Pitt plays Jerry Lane, a United Nations employee, insert eye roll here, who is tasked with curing the virus that causes zombification after finding out that echinacea is bullshit. (laughs) And the clock is ticking, as they have only 90 days before the planet is literally eaten alive. Now, of course, things wouldn't have come so down to the wire had he not kept adopting every kid he came across. Pretty much, Hollywood's stuck in a repeat cycle of an end-of-the-world soap opera. As the world turns, no, nothing. Oh right. my God, we didn't watch that with our grandmother like you did, Paul. <laughs> I'm we had a nice bowl of mints and we'd watch oh as the world God. turns. Boy, I don't remember that music. Me either. Fire up the Metamucil, Grandma. It's time for <laughs> time you know. for hard candy, and that's the world. Turns. Hey, weren't these end of the world movies supposed to be released last year? Did these studios all miss the Mayan calendar. 
<laughs> and we need a movie musical about the end of the world. Oh, We've yeah. had the rom-com, Seeking a Friend for the End of the World. Last week's hipster, Raunchcom, This is the End. The zombies from this week and nearly every week, the space aliens. Take your pick of any War of the Worlds-y invasion flick. And even The Croods, a story about people at the beginning of the world, saw the end of the world. Why hasn't Bollywood done an end of the world movie yet? Think they know something we don't? There was actually a bidding war for the rights to this movie between Leonardo DiCaprio's production company, Appian Way, and Brad Pitt's company, Plan B Entertainment. Talk about feeling like the prettiest girl at the prom. Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio fighting over your box? O- office. Box <laughs> office. Yes. There have been some marketing issues with this film already, even at advanced screenings, when poor font choice confused our greatest generation as throngs of octogenarians lined up to see a movie they thought was about the Second World War. But instead of Catherine Hepburn and Spencer Tracy, they are treated to Brad Pitt and soon-to-be-eaten bystander number one. But that's perfect because old people walk like zombies anyway. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) But geeks get excited. The credits say there will be an appearance by Doctor Who. Oh, wait. Wait. Uh... Stifle the excitement. Uh, that's in fact a doctor, comma, WHO, a World Health Organization. Sorry. Uh, anyway, don't get your TARDIS in an uproar. <laughs> Remember when zombies would just dance to Thriller? Bet you Brad Pitt could kick the shit out of them. <laughs> so there you go. World War Z. Yeah. Brad Pitt back in a blockbuster, a summer movie. What's the last time he did that? Troy? Is it the last time he showed up at a big summer I, movie? I didn't see that. Was that a blockbuster? I don't, think uh, so. I don't know. I, didn't. Last thing you I don't think it was, which is probably why I said, you know, screw this, I'm going back to the holidays. Make my movies at Christmas time. Yeah, well, he was just in that uh, uh, that Swedish movie, that Swedish director movie. Killing Them Softly, Killing Them Slowly. Yeah, yeah Killing yep, Them the, Softly. Uh, yeah, yeah, that guy from uh, the, uh, what's the, Robert Ford. The Jesse James Robert Ford movie, and, which uh, is all I can call that movie, the Jesse James Robert Ford movie. That's a long title. You know title. what I'm talking about, but yeah, that's all the title you're going to get out of me. Yeah, yeah, but that's the same director, and that tanked sadly. Well, that doesn't sound like a blockbuster by any means. No, it it's not going to be. Do you also call the song from the Who "Teenage Wasteland," or do you call it Bob? Nah, I, can't, I can't go that far. That's oh. too much title. <laughs> too much title. You know what you were talking about that Bollywood? I was curious what that would sound like. I'm going to pimp you out. What What are you talking about? Bollywood. I don't know. Like, hey, 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 it would oh. just bleed into screaming zombies, and you know you'd have that that uh, I just slum I dog millionaire feel. Bollywood and zombie would go together, but all right, all right, good. You know all the uh, zombie, all the people running uh, like crazy in in Slum Dog Millionaire. Imagine yeah. if they were just chasing you f- to eat your flesh. I think they Same might be thing. anyway. India's kind of crazy sometimes. What I love about Bollywood movies yeah. is everybody works. What do you mean? There's there's like a million people. The cast is a million people in every oh. one of their movies. Everyone's working. Everybody's relatives have gotten in the movie. Everyone's making their... And all the producers' girlfriends are in the film. Exactly. And that's how it should the be. Zombies would have to break in a dance, of course. Hey. Yeah. I mean, they do, nothing happens for too long in a Bollywood movie without everybody breaking oh, exactly. And they can't yeah. touch each other because they can be sexual, but they can't physically touch. Is that right? It's yeah. like the champagne room at the G-Spot Lounge. Yeah, I, apparently it is. You know, that makes sense because you hear that stuff for like regular life about yeah. how they're going through their oh, day. Oh, no, they can't do that. The Indian either. people can't touch one another and the men and the women have these laws and stuff. But when they're dancing, you still keep that up? Oh, yeah. yeah they can't. But wow. they have a lot of uh, little hand. The movements all mean something. I could be saying something dirty right now. We've just lost our big Indian contingency. Oh, That's right. We lost old people earlier. Old. I mean, we, really, we have a very small audience at this point. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Let's keep All the prize people. demographics are leaving us. So the question oh. is, will chicks see this? I mean, Brad Pitt, no, ladies love Brad Pitt. He looks like hell in this movie. Really? Does he take he looks it? like Thor in this movie. Yeah, oh. he does. Yeah. All right, I have a question for you because I haven't really paid much attention. Uh, I'm secure does enough he my take, manhood to know this. <laughs> as, as a chick, mm-hmm. does he take his shirt off? I don't know how bad mm-hmm. the situation gets. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, if, if there's, there's real trouble. <laughs> it's not going well, yeah. He may, if that may come to that. There's a potential that he might take his shirt off. I'd go see it, but I'd buy popcorn and get something to eat, just to make sure it was worth it. Even if he didn't take you, his shirt I off, I guarantee the solution for stopping zombies from becoming zombies has something to do with him taking his shirt off. I mean, it maybe would. that's the solution. Actually, <laughs> it'd be the solution for me seeing it. He has a very idyllic family life in the trailer. It starts out with one of those. Nah, 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 oh, see now nah, that's nah, hot nah, nah. for chicks. And you know, know there's just some nightmare right around the corner. I hate that horseshit. That well choreographed chaos where everyone's just getting along, but things are crazy and somebody's burning but eggs. And I was gonna say, I was gonna say eggs. They're yeah. cooking. Girl. Everything's great. Everything's <laughs> great. <laughs> End of the world. So so hey, great. Hey, wait, wait a minute. Something's out. on Duh. the background. Yeah, the news then, is on the background. But then that would be attractive to women as well because watching Brad Pitt be an awesome husband and father, sexy. 
Well, he's already got like 27 kids. Sexy. Can you get if sexier? You like, well, yeah, that's hot. If you're oh, like, okay. I want my husband to be good with the kids. That brings up another dick. question. What? Does that kind of take him off the uh, off the pedestal guys put him on? You know, they're like, oh, he's oh. super ripped. He's good Angelina Jolie. He's also got like nine kids hanging off. That, of him. And every time you see him, he's got like five bags of shit he's carrying around <laughs> with diapers and everything. And you're like, should I, should I continue to think this? All right. Like, I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of most women, not yes. myself so much because I'm not big on kids. But chicks dig dudes who know how to take care of their kids. That's but he's hot. asking about guys. Oh, I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> okay, thanks, Karen, I mean, for your insight. If, if that is a technique to meet chicks at the park, I mean, he's just taking it to another level. Right? Oh, yeah. It totally works. <laughs> Nine Please. of them. At some no. point, you, the girls aren't that charmed by it. It's what. Brad Pitt, though. Yeah. He <laughs> could be it. selling ice cream out of a truck, and we'd be, like, psyched. Maybe we should be in awe. Yeah. He straps yeah. a banjo to his back and a bandana around one of those kids' necks. Man, what chicks would just come flocking. <laughs> All right, I don't even know what you're referencing, when but you go to the park. Yeah. You go to the park, you put a bandana around your puppy. Around your dog. Around your dog. But you don't put a banjo on your back. What are you talking about? We'll be back Guitar. after oh. this uh, mini break with a surprise guest. I mentioned uh, Mitch Rouse well, at the top of the show. He'll I be joining us. I think he's ran away. I think he's left. <laughs> but when we come of... back from this song, we will have a uh, real life, a living, breathing, well, we're going to have a zombie oh. in studio. Can to you give have us, a real uh, life zombie? Yeah. I don't know. He'll give us he thoughts on uh, World War Z and the horror genre in general when we come back. Welcome back to the Movie Showcast. We are all familiar with Interview with the Vampire, but vampires aren't the only eternally damned. There's the Kardashians, Westboro Baptist Church, and of course, zombies. Which is why we'd like to introduce a Movie Showcast original segment, Dialogue with the Undead. See how it's different? Uh, Or is it the living dead? I'm not sure. What's the difference? Here to answer that question, and many more is our special guest, an actual zombie. Please welcome Herm Winningham, everybody. Herm Winningham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pont actually uh, prefer life challenged. That's that's fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Herm, as one of the living who has come back from the dead, uh, these days have got to be the salad days for you, no? TV, movies, I mean, zombies are everywhere. Yeah, yeah, I mean, works good. I mean, we're certainly in demand, but, uh, you know, the competition's fierce. I'm not going to bullshit you, all right? There's, a, there's been an anti-population explosion, all right? The influx of dead every day puts the illegal immigration debate to shame. You know what I'm saying? I see, now this is fascinating. Because as, as one who is currently living, I never think about how those of us who have fatal accidents or catch terminal diseases are affecting your job market. <laughs> You can't walk down the middle of the street these days without finding a way to die, you know? <laughs> okay, how do you find roles? Are there good roles out there for the living dead, or do you feel stereotyped? Are you mocking me? I mean, we get stereotyped, okay? Always playing the slow-witted, slow-footed, bring hundred buffoons, all right? Just once. Just once. I swear to God. You know what? Just, just cast us as a doctor. I-, I gotta admit, though, that I haven't seen zombies quite like the horde of zombies in World War Z. <sighs> you know what? I went to the premiere, all right? You probably wouldn't know, though, because I never, you know... They don't want us on the red carpet, okay? <laughs> Nobody wants my body parts falling over. Oh, God, I'm, you know what? Let's Can we move on? Well, thank God the carpet is red, right? I mean, that's... Oh, yeah. Thank God, right. You know what? I can get behind this whole World War Z thing, okay? They run and they roll and they swarm the victims, all right? They just shatter the age-old convention that zombies have been laboring under for many, many years. We're not that slow. <laughs> Okay, but I've heard that they seen they're lazy, sloppy, uh, ill-mannered. That's the stereotype. Yes, that's um, uh, you know, that's man. Yeah, wow, that is. <laughs> <laughs> that's just not cool. I mean, that's that's the that, you know that's a pro- uh, wow. You know, I could play a senator. Okay, <laughs> really, <laughs> throw me in a tie. You know, you can't tell the difference between me and and John McCain. I mean, come on, you get us up close. <laughs> I think your kind needs okay, a spokesperson. Stop, stop. Our kind? Cool. That, oh. Wow. Just, uh-huh. oh, that's just such a dentist. I don't mean anything. I, I just don't know how to refer to you. You just, okay, yeah, well, okay. Wow. You're just scared of us, okay? I used to be just like you. Oh. Society yeah. still hasn't entirely accepted us, you know? I mean, Bruce Willis, this guy has to play a, a closeted dead man for practically in every frame of the sixth sense, you know? 
And then at the end he comes out, you know, when it would, would hurt your precious live senses. Well, I think Willis would make a great spokesman. Of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they say, you know, they say you really haven't made it in the business until one of Hollywood's pretty boys plays you, you know? So we're, so we're represented by a handsome Dan in some lead role in the summer film. You know, I can deal with that, okay? I, I like me. First of all, okay? I like me and I like who I am. Okay. You know what I mean? So I'm going to I'm gonna pitch this. You remember the kid from the, the Potter movies? Yeah. Remember the little wizard? The Rupert Gint? I'm going to pitch that kid on a car accident. <laughs> he would like Rupert Grint to have a car accident. Yeah. That or something he's playing with and it goes off. <laughs> I bet he'd take you up on that. Mm. Hey, look, I got to jump in here. I, I find it hard to believe that with, with all the great dead actors, there's no one out there that can be a really great dead leading man. Heath Ledger. Okay. Oh, yeah. Mm. yeah. That guy. That was the last great zombie actor, that guy. Okay? Yeah. Heath Ledger? Yeah. I mean, this guy, literally, literally, okay? And jot this down. This guy yeah. is dead and he wins an Oscar. Too soon. I'm sorry, that just goes off whenever appropriate. That's fine. <laughs> okay. Look, this, of course, this, this whole thing's gone to his head, and he, 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 you know, he, he won't play anything. He's just too full of himself. He just doesn't want to talk. He just wants to lay there. So yeah. Heath Ledger, I mean, that's, that's it for a great Life Challenge actor working today? That's it? I mean, we'd, we'd like to claim Johnny Depp. I mean, oh. if, you've, you know, if you've seen him as Tonto on the Lone Ranger Tradle, that, that's not makeup, okay? And jury's out on Nick Nolte and Gary Busey. Don't get those two. You get those two guys in a car together. Mm -hmm. They don't even drive it. They just <laughs> sit in the back and bang their heads on the window. Oh! So I'm gonna go with Jack Nicholson. The, the, he is the best. Whoa! Wait, Jack Nicholson? Jack Nicholson's a zombie? Oh fuck me! I said too much. <laughs> um, uh, is he? Is he? Uh, I actually have a question. It's a little bit different. It's a little personal, if you don't mind. No, fire away. Oh, uh, my bad. Uh, <laughs> Shoot, actually. Is that how you die? You know what? Oh, uh, yeah? Oh, let's just move on. Okay. Uh, my question is about your romantic life. I, I want to know, do you have a romantic life? Oh. <sighs> oh, no. Great question. Thank you. And the, you know what? The movies certainly don't help us out with that one. I mean, werewolves and Draculas and what's not. I mean, they're, they're sexy. You know, they're yeah. sexing it up on the big screen. You know, they're just screaming brains. You know, they're, we're we're screaming. They're just there. You know, and then they're not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I've actually heard that there's a hunky Frankenstein. Really? There's a hunky Frankenstein. Yeah, yeah. He's he's made from all the sexiest parts okay. of hunky dead actors. Mm -hmm. You know. I don't really have time to get into it right now, but we've we've had him on the show quite a few times. Trust me. He's, yeah, he's yeah, but it, you know, it, it's a little tough to find a lady who likes the uh, smell of turpentine or formaldehyde. You know, yeah. I mean, the nails continue growing. I mean, despite the money I put into manicures, but I just it's I. <sighs> I, I hate to say it, but I kind of think it's well past the time for a sexy zombie movie. You know, a Twilight for the post living. Sure. You know what? Focus groups. Focus groups show that it's hard to, you know, look hot when your flesh is rotting away, okay? Yeah. I mean, who wants that? You know, you reach up and an ear falls off. Nobody wants to have sex with a dead guy. Okay, Tyra Reed, maybe. You do kind of have an unfortunate <laughs> odor that can't do you any favors. Thank you. Yeah. You know what? You should smell the inside of this hat. <laughs> oh, God. I've tried cologne, but, you know, it just ended up smelling like some, you know, I hate to say it. Yeah. To be a, you know, is a very good giver. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, especially in here in L.A. I mean, it's, let's face it, all right? If you're eating... If all you're eating is brains, then Hollywood isn't exactly, you know, a hometown buffet. You know, but from a distance, I think that you kind of look good as the Walking Dead. I, I can't tell if you're a zombie or a hipster. You're just saying that, but I appreciate it. Sure. <laughs> now, on the bright side, you know what? I've been dead since 72. Uh -huh. All right? That's, not, that's, that's a long time for a guy like me. And that means my clothes, you know what? These things are finally coming back in style. Herm, we're yeah. thrilled you could come here today and shed some light on the afterlife <laughs> of the life challenged. I wish you the best in your fight for equality in the world. Yeah, well, you know what they say. We're here, we're dead. Get used to it. Yeah. Thanks, Herm. They do say that. Well, that's one guest down, and we have another coming up. Actor, writer, director Mitch Rouse will oh. be with us when we come back from this breaklet. And we are back with this week's showcast guest. So many ways to describe him. He's a writer. I uh, wrote Without a Paddle. And he's an actor. He's been in Reno 911, The Secret Lives of Men. TV star from Exit 57 and Factory, director of the film Employee of the Month. 
and recently adding to his credits, Herm Winningham, Life Challenged Zombie. <laughs> Mitch Rouse, everybody. Get that on the IMDb Thank right away. So right away. <laughs> Have somebody get that on there. It sounded like you played Herm Drunk. <laughs> I did. Okay. I did. I, I, drunk I, and dead are very similar. Yes. <laughs> and uh, with the secret. <laughs> like Meryl Streep, you just I have the secret. You never tell anyone what it is. I won't. <laughs> yeah. Now, Mitch, let's start off with uh, something we like to ask our guest. What's your favorite movie of all time? Uh, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Oh, yeah. oh nice. Yeah, that's a good. You're allowed to stay. Yeah, that's a... <laughs> we decided quickly. That is a good one. That is That, to me, is like... I don't know how John Hughes had this teen thing that he was so associated with, but he had these great adult comedies. Because oh, yeah. the people forget he wrote Mr. Mom, he wrote vacation and planes trains and automobiles and they're all on the same plane of awesome yeah i mean the relationship in the planes trains and automobiles is just so incredibly mature but of course uh, the relationships in breakfast club are incredibly yeah, those mature are, as well those are adult for the younger generation kind of but, but um del is the name of john candy's character and i often wonder if he named him after del close huh and now I'm wondering. I'm mm. just saying. <laughs> we will uh, wonder together. Throwing it out there. I don't know Karen that does did. that. Makes us wonder. But I don't. I don't know that uh, he had a relation that big of a relationship with Dell, though. I don't know. Yeah. You can if you if you watch uh, any of Mitch's movies or TV shows, you can play the Dell Close drinking game, yes, and uh, Dell does show up in almost everything. <laughs> yeah, he's I saw it in Merkin Merkin I saw him in the pilot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and there's a big painting of him in uh, Employee of the Month, right? Yep. Yeah. Which is actually hanging at the uh, I.O. Oh, visuals. is that the painting from uh, the play? That is the one. That's pretty cool. Oh. Mm -hmm. I should mention Merck and Penal. We uh, referenced it. This is a new... Uh, Mitch has written and created uh, Strangers with Candy, and now this is... A, and The Factory... And now this is a new pilot out called Merkin Penal, yes. and it's going to play in some festivals, so there's it chances is. for people to see it. But it's a gathering together of the old gang, right? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I created it uh, with uh, David Pasquazi. You had me at the title, by the way. <laughs> Merkin yes. Penal. Yeah. That's, yeah. I now, will watch now, this. What were the alternate versions, or was it always uh, Merkin Penal? <laughs> I kept saying Merkin Prison, and David would go, ah, uh, no, let's, uh, <laughs> let's uh, Merkin Penal. So we went with that. Yeah, and, and I like the response is Dave Pesquese. Mm. <laughs> I can't respond. Yeah, it's bizarre. You know, uh, last uh, night when we were doing some research on the show, we were at his house writing, and I just had to look up Merkins because there are. Did you not know what it was? I knew, but I just wanted to see some, and there's right. all sorts of different varieties. Is it is yeah. it a joke thing? Because nobody actually because what it is is it's a it's a a, a fake it's, bush. Yeah, I think yeah. they wear them when they're filming nude scenes, don't they? I uh, why would they? <laughs> Well, um, I don't know. Just it's a fashionable no, thing. Yeah. No, but I mean, they used to wear them. What back if you're in, embarrassed uh, of the amount of hair you have, whether too yeah. much or too little? Right. So put more down there. Right. Really? Exactly. So if you can sculpt at this. Uh, if people are bald down there, they put Perkins on. Is that the real thing? Yeah. Oh, oh come on! But but women are so busy shaving that all off now. But no, 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 no. This is if you. Can, this isn't an <laughs> option. Oh. This is if you can't grow hair down south. Oh, it's a prosthetic. I'd be psyched if I couldn't. It's a tube for your. <laughs> Stocks. It's a dicky for your pussy. Okay. Or, there yes. you go. Okay, yeah. Sure. And this whole conversation was probably had at the beginning of the <laughs> creation of your pilot, right? <laughs> Nobody really questioned me. Oh, no, 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 no. Merkin Pino. Oh, okay. When we, uh, actually, when we were in the fact, when we worked at a factory called Merkin, in uh, in another show we did. So, yeah. Oh, oh awesome. in the factory. Yeah. Yes. The name of the factory. Which was on Merkin. Spike. Yes. And it's the same crew in Merkin Pino. Yes, it is. Plus DJ Jagodowski. Yes. Yeah, this is a this is a bunch of now, Adam and Karen and I have all spent some time in Chicago, mm -hmm. and there's a whole uh, boatload of Chicago folks in uh, Merkin Penal, including Jay Leggett, yep, longtime mm -hmm. collaborator of yours, right? Yes, he is. Uh, T.J. Jagodowski, mm -hmm. longtime collaborator of Dave Pasquazi's, yes. right? And their two person show, Six Degrees. Uh, I saw Renee Albert. Yes, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, Mark Beltzman's in there. Uh, Rick Hall's in there. Yes, uh, Rick Hall. Um, Brian Doyle Murray, Joel Murray. Uh, new Johnny. guy we've been working with, Johnny Hurtline, who's yeah, very, very funny. We were, Johnny. A, we were in an IO team with Johnny. Mm -hmm. That's how we knew him. Yeah, Johnny's, uh, hey, how are you, man? Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's very accurate. Uh, yes. <laughs> hey, man, I want to tell you about, um, I was going to kill this guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's exactly right. Um, but yeah, so we have a lot of people, uh, Renee Albert, uh, Mike Coleman, who is oh, yeah. yes. just a rock. Larry Joe Campbell. Yes. Not Chicago, though, but uh, I feel like he is because he's so we second city from Detroit, Detroit right? Yeah, yeah. he is. Uh, and Bruce Jarko, very, very funny man. And Peter McKenzie. Peter McKenzie is the most uh, – he played um, the, the – it's about a privately run prison, and he 
owned the prison. And he is... Oh, he's hilarious. He makes me laugh, but he never gets to play those roles. He never gets to play... He always plays the dad or... Oh, he was You know, giving the daughter the car for school. But he never plays that, that role. He just is the funniest... One of the funniest guys I know. He was great. And so was the guy he pushes out of the way. That's Bruce Jarko. Oh, that my... <laughs> that guy was my favorite. He was fantastic. And that's totally like... Obviously, there's... It, we, we got to see the pilot of this. Uh, yeah. You sent us the link. Uh, but... Uh, the, the the great thing is there's obviously so many other stories that yeah. it, we if this yeah. you know when it becomes a series that and the one uh, the privately run prison I think is the most I mean the idea of a corporation that has to operate inside of a, oh, no. a men's penitentiary is just but there I are mean, a lot of them those do exist and, oh yeah, and yeah. more yeah. in L A than any other or more in California than anywhere else and in a fun way I think that it was really interesting that you brought up the point that your character is starting off with thirty days mm-hmm. you do one minor infraction that yes. wasn't even proven. And they can just tell you you're staying for 30 more days. Yep. And it's cost effective for them to keep you there. Frightening. Yes. So in your comedy, I learned something. Thank you. <laughs> My job is done. <laughs> yeah. It's a horrific statement of, uh, of a, a terrible way that America is treating some of its own people. Mm. Uh, but it's hilarious. Yes, yes. it is. <laughs> but also, uh, uh, Pete Holney's in it. Oh, yeah. Kevin Dorf. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I saw Kevin Dorf. Um, Chris Nelson, uh, who's really, really funny, too. And uh, Kenny Campbell. And uh, Joel Jay Murray. Mc- Jay Michalski, who is very, very funny as well. You, you, look, you look like somebody, and I can't know who it is. I don't know who it is. I look like somebody? You do, besides yourself. <laughs> I've been told very strange ones that I don't see at all. I've been told yeah. Ray Liotta. You, there's a little bit of that. Yeah, didn't he have blue eyes, first of all? Like, I thought I was totally right out well, because not, of that. Well, that's, they said you almost look like him. I, 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 I think he has dreamy eyes, Paul. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and then Hasselhoff, I've got. There you go. That's what it is. But here's who, here's who I think. That's what it is. Is that really it? That's what it is. Because here's who I That's think. That's really, really funny. As, as Jeff Bridges laughs at you. Because I've Thank often you. been told. I'll take that. I've often told Ryan Reynolds, but you got to go pre-shredded. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I look just like him. Two guys, a girl, and a thing. I, that, I look like him. Blade Trinity? No. Blade Trinity you on? Not, you are not the Blade no. Trinity. I am Ryan not Ryan Reynolds. Reynolds. <laughs> Amityville Horror, or whatever. I'm not that guy. But once upon a time, yeah, I was I was like Mr. Handsome now. He's like the handsome guy now. That's the funny thing. I gotta about get back there. Ryan Reynolds. He can never not have been in Blade Trinity, no matter what he does. I know, <laughs> I know it. And that's what's gonna be on his grave. <laughs> he was in Blade Trinity. Wouldn't you love it too when somebody sees him and they go, You're um um what I see you in? <laughs> and they go, X-Men, no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, that one where I'm buried. No, no. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> where I'm the fat guy. No, no, no. What was that? Two and a half men. No, where you were a boo. Where we hated you. <laughs> <laughs> in that role I hated you in. What was Come that? Come on, when you needed that money and you did that thing. <laughs> Now, besides these TV shows, uh, you've made a movie, which, of course, we can all get behind. Yeah. Mm, uh, yes. Employee of the Month. Yes. Now, this starred uh, Matt Dillon, Steve Zahn, Christine Applegate. Mm-hmm. And um, what was uh, – tell us what that was about. I mean, or I could tell you about, but you, you, know, you could tell us. Um, it was about a w- – w- I was driving to an audition one day, and, and, and I was late, and it was storming. And I was like, fuck, man, you don't – can we cuss on here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. cool. I, Fuck yeah. yeah. So I'm on my way to an audition and I go, uh, I get pulled over, I pull over in the rain, I'm, I'm late, and then I'm like, wow, you don't plan a shitty day. And then I thought, <laughs> what if you did? And uh, so that's sort of where the, yeah. the idea for Employee of the Month came from. So it is sort of, I blew off the audition and just sort of wrote the thing, what I wanted to do. And then uh, it was actually supposed to be for me and Jay Leggett to play the two leads, but there's no money there. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, we ended up. Uh, Bob Yari. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's yeah. right. Kathy Shulman and Tom Noonan. And, uh, Bob Yari, producer of uh, Crash. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They, oh, that's right. Yeah. 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 It's so producer. similar to the tone of your movie. It really is. Yeah. Good. <laughs> a hot as hell day in uh, LA where people can't take it anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Actually, uh, Paul Haggis <laughs> and I did a pilot years ago. Uh, it was me and Virginia Madsen. And don't name your pilot this, okay? <laughs> okay. No, Get your pen. Ready to write Do it down. Do not name your pilot. Ghost of a Chance. <laughs> oh, oh, come yeah. on. It means two things. You're Does asking it? for it. <laughs> Anything that means two things gets picked up, right? No. Does it? <laughs> we've, got, we've got money behind our new pilot. Failed attempt. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. We're hoping yeah. that's going to go well. There's no fucking way. Ghost yeah. of a Chance. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. And she was a ghost. Oh. <laughs> of, 
But she's a lovely woman, right? She is wonderful. Lovely. Now, here's the yes. question. Yeah. It's called Ghost of a Chance. There is a ghost. But it, it, it only becomes a successful title with two things if she has a chance. Does she have a chance? At what? At me? In the movie. <laughs> sure. It was a TV show. Her TV show. <laughs> It didn't have a chance. <laughs> <laughs> it, she, the show, right. nobody. Paul Haggis, nobody no. had a chance. But I mean, it was it was a it was a fun time to do it. You know, we had a blast doing it. And I got yeah. to meet uh, um, Ron Howard's dad. He played a guy in it. And that's mm. where you just go. Rants. Rants. Nice. Mm. That's cool. Change your name. Mm. Yeah, he was. Um, <laughs> yeah, he was in it. But that's when you meet one of those guys. You know, here's all these people on this set. And I'm like, oh my god, it's Rance Howard. So that's awesome. <laughs> now this was. Uh, how did you go about to make Employee of the Month, by the way, is on Netflix? Yes, it is. At a uh, 2004 feature. Mm -hmm. And you had done some TV up till then. So mm -hmm. did you just say, it's time, or I got to make a feature? Or, uh, you know, when, when you had the idea, you said, this. I'm, I'm not going to just, like, have it be an idea. I want to write and direct. And you were in it, too, right? So for yeah. No, well, yeah. I'm a dead guy. I'm, yeah. uh, <laughs> but, uh, well, you're very good thank at you. that. Yeah, yeah. I was very, yes. Yeah. Um, but no, there was... It gets on IMDb. Yeah. That's really... We didn't mean to typecast you. No, 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 that's the fine. zombie thing. <laughs> that's, and the dead yeah. guy. that's fine. I do what I do. <laughs> um, uh, no, it was, it was, it was. We had a blast doing it, and um, I wrote it with Jay Leggett, uh, and Jay and I've done a bunch of stuff together. And uh, yeah, it was just, it was just fun. It was just one of those things where we sort of, and we ended up at Sundance. That's what, that's what we were doing. It was so funny because I was like, no, we're gonna go to Sundance. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> says that. Yeah, and then everybody goes, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but we ended up at Sundance. And um, really had a blast. Really, really, really had a blast. And everybody came out. Is it a know. fun time? Big party? Sundance? It was really, it was just so stupidly ridiculous, you know, because every movie's there and, and uh, um, it's just, they just give you shit. What do you, yeah, just, what'd you get in your bag, your well, sweat they, bag? We went to, well, they just, it's like you get up and there's a bag there. It's like a Santa Claus came or something. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck? There's some shoes. That's awesome. And, um, but no, we went to, uh, we went to Panasonic, was it Panasonic? Went to the Panasonic house. I think it was Panasonic. And the guy goes, um, the Panasonic house at the some indie the, yeah, movie you, festival. Right. You go there and they, HD and, demonstration or something. Yeah. yeah but then I mean, you go in and they, they have a TV that's like this big and then they start getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So when you walk in, there's two big, huge ones on the wall. Oh. I mean, they're huge. And so the guy is like, so pick out your TV, you know, and he's, and I'm like, I want that. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, okay. So. Get I, out of here. What? No, I get this Shut huge, up. stupid, huge, stupid, huge <laughs> TV. Wow. Because he didn't want to say no. And I knew it because he was pointing at all these TVs. He was yeah. like, but doesn't he want you to have the size TV that oh, you're known to, as? Carry it too. A just, little baby yeah. TV? He just, right. you know, he wanted something small that I would put in my pocket and go, thanks. Because, um, like, isn't that the Tom Cruise TV oh. and then this is the Mitch TV? Oh, yeah. No, this is you the know? Mitch TV. This, <laughs> this is, it was so ridiculous. But it was... Uh, um, one of those things where he couldn't go, no. Great, good for you. you know? right, right. But it was, oh my God, yeah. So, I want to play a clip from Employee of the Month because this is Adam's favorite clip <laughs> from Employee it's of the Month. It's because this line will I'll still say as a, as, a, as, a, as a quote, which is, woman on fire. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's like what do you need? Or lady. I got fired today. Congratulations, it's about time. I mean, that, that is a reason to throw a party. I don't know how you stood in there this long. I mean, I... I would have bludgeoned somebody to death with a goddamn have a nice day paperweight after two days in that <laughs> Stepford White Zon freak show bank movie. fucks in their Books Brothers suits yeah, yeah, dangling people by their balls sucking back mocha lattes walking around like they're better than a working man like me whispering behind my back who needs that man they don't deserve the steam off your piss you got fired great when's your last day tomorrow How'd the skank take it when you told her? Don't call her a skank. Yeah, but you knew what I was talking about, didn't you? <laughs> Whoa, uh, lady on fire! <laughs> we got a lady on fire! We got a lady! Uh, the woman just runs past uh, on fire. Running just feeds the flames. <laughs> All right, look, I gotta go, man. Yeah. Sometimes the quote, lady on fire will come up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, when we, I wrote that, and Jay goes, dude, we can't do that. And I'm like, dude, this is hilarious. We'll set somebody on fire and he just runs by. He was like, we can't, that's. <laughs> yeah, it's the funny, it, there's it's a visual so to it, obviously, but at least yeah. you hear the flames there. Just, okay, yeah, he's yeah. talking on the phone and then just a complete person on fire yeah. runs past. It's running only feeds the flames. And running only feeds the flames. Wow. Really. Uh, well, yeah. I have some other questions here and a little something that we like to do at the movie guys called 
Five questions for other guests. Five. Uh. Haha. <laughs> said five. Uh. What? You yeah, five. Uh. Haha. <laughs> question for other guests. There you go. You did not make that. There's today. a theme song. There's okay. a theme song for everything we, we do here. We shouldn't leave you alone. That's it. <laughs> All right. So this is uh, so Mitch Ross. I'm going to ask you these five questions for other guests. I think okay. you get the idea how this is going to go. So uh, first, I ask you, how did it feel to lose the Tonight Show? Oh my God. <laughs> um, when they told me I was going to get it, and I was like, oh, and they and, and they were like, but don't say anything. <laughs> and I'm like, but you know, I I got to. I gotta let this. I gotta leak this. Sure. And they're like, no, 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 don't. And I said, why? And they said, mm, <laughs> he doesn't know. What? And I was like, what do you mean he doesn't know? He's come on. And they were like, no, 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 he doesn't know yet. And I was like, okay. And uh, so I said, but he's a friend. You know, he's a friend. And then and I said, I'm going to see him for lunch. And he goes, well, don't, because we would go to Shoney's. There's a the big boy. Shoney's. The Shoney's. <laughs> no, we go to the Shoney's big boy. Right Sambo's was close. <laughs> but, it, but it's right from across the street. Um, from the big, the, you know what I'm talking about, the big boy. Yeah, they bring sure. all the and the, the cars on Fridays. It's 50s day. And they, yeah. they will actually skate up to your car. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So don't look at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> so I'm getting the Tonight Show. Right. And they're like, oh. And I was like, this is a dream come true that you don't have to rap. And... Um, <laughs> So then, when, you know, and I'm, and I'm prepping and we're doing all these things where I'm going to run all the way across, to, you know, I'm going to run from New York all the way to Los Angeles and start the show. Sure, sure. I thought that was, why don't we come up with something else? Because that was the only thing anybody brought up. And I was like, okay, come on. This is a room full of writers. Yeah, it's so forced up. It's been done, right? <laughs> right. So yeah. anyway, after, and I really ran all that way. And so it was, you know, really, really disappointing. Um. I'm going to hold for this plane. Yeah, fuck the plane. <laughs> fuck the plane. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Admiral's launch. Um, so, yeah, so I was, and I was, uh, it was hurt. I wasn't uh, surprised. But I, when I, because when they, they said what they were going to do is give him a 10 o'clock spot. And if you know one thing mm-hmm. about Jay Leno, it's his sketch. <laughs> <laughs> um, give him a car show. Oh, absolutely. Um, Have him go to the big boy on Friday night with a camera. With one of his cars. Yep. That makes sense. But nobody goes, fuck, you know who I wish had a sketch show? <laughs> fuck Leno. <laughs> He'll never do it. <laughs> you know, a good time for a sketch show, 10 o'clock every night. Who That's doesn't what, want that? Yeah. People are clamoring. Well, it's people good to see you still have a sense of humor about it. Oh, uh, I, you know, I brushed it. Look at that. Yeah. Your situation. I, uh, I, I do have another question for you. I sure. was just curious mm-hmm. if you knew they were going to shoot your vagina during that famous scene from Basic Instinct. I knew the day before. How did you know? <laughs> See, well, they had brought in it. a bunch of panties and they said, do you want to wear any of these? Right. <laughs> and I said, I want to ride free. Whoa. Right. Yeah. Was your, it was your idea? <laughs> it was sort of the crew's idea. I bet it was. <laughs> and uh, they were saying, you know, if you know, Streep would go bald. And I was like, <laughs> well, I don't want to shave it. You know, and, and they're like, no, 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 tease it. Maybe get a little Merkin? A little Merkin. And I said, you know, <laughs> if we're going to do this, uh, let's do this. <laughs> and, um, you know, I mean, the rest is, the rest is, you know, movie history. Movie history. Yeah, yeah definitely. Actually, Mitch, I was wondering, when you were leaking the NSA secrets, mm-hmm. were you at all tempted to leak the ending to White House Down? Wow. You know what I mean? Right. What's on the, my tip, tip of right tip. there? I'm not going to do it. No, 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 no scoops for I'll the movie guys. This. Just for the movie. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll say this: we win. Oh, wow! Whoa! Okay. We don't know how, but we know we do. We do. Mm. That's good. I can live mm-hmm. with that. All right, I got a question. Oh, great. This is for a different guest, but I. Here you go. If you were to direct Lady in the Water all over again, would you do it differently? I'd get a bigger pool. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it needed. It's because I'm going. Wait a minute. What's That's the budget what it, on this? Yeah. How are you going to put a mermaid in that little thing? Right? Yeah. Why do I need to? Come on. They, they, they shot that in a weekend. Yeah. Keep, and I'm like, wait a minute. Come on. Really? <laughs> what is scouting doing for you guys? What did what, we have $20? Now go scout. He came back in an hour. I got the pool. And you should see the little <laughs> rooms around it. <laughs> What's, what you, come on. I heard. Is it true they wanted an above ground pool? They originally? Did. Yeah. Originally, that's the way it's written. Yeah. <laughs> You know, at the end, she was trying to get out, and the whole thing, it's very funny. The whole, it's that classic, you know. Um, America's YouTube. Home Video, right? It's like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, except, you know, and, and she's, you know, and it, they did test screenings. Uh-huh. And uh, that's really the only the only part that we uh, reshot was that 
was that? Because they were like, this is, you know, this is hitting too close to home. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, <laughs> is it hard to balance the life of a working actor and mother? Wow. Hmm, that's so tough. Well, oh, oh, look at oh me. Oh, my God, it's tearing up. <laughs> Oh, this. Never I didn't know that the guest. You're an Question asshole. Was, oh my um, God. We've gone too far. You're like Barbara Walters making him cry. I apologize. I, I, I touch um, a nerve. I'll say this. I'm committed to both. <laughs> um, because I get the same thrill out of looking into a director's eyes <laughs> as I do when I'm looking at my childhood. Oh my God. And I, mm, there we go. Um, and they both yell, you know, and crying and pissing themselves, but I'll commit and they, I don't know, you just, mm, it's a, it's a, wow, 50-50, flip the coin, I'll go, I don't, you know, every day, every day, you know, it's just, it's this, yeah, this decision, yeah, what decision, yeah, it's, it's, it's Kramer versus Kramer, <laughs> yes, you know, it's all of it. Mm. All right, well, no, thank you. That was, that's good to hear. I didn't know it was a golf clap. I think, I think we answer. went to a good place there. Yeah. I think we asked the right Truthful. thing. I think Mitch needed to say that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mitch Rose. I do like that the director is much like your child because they're screaming, pissing, and moaning. <laughs> yeah. And they're both unreasonable. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Demands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, now before we uh, wrap things up and let you go, I want to talk about, uh, well, look, we were improvising. And Bernie Sollins, one of the founders of the Second yeah, City, passed yeah. away this last week. Yes, he did. Yeah. And we were talking a little bit uh, off the air here about him, and I, I never met him. Um, did you ever meet him? I did. But did, I did. And you and uh, work with him? I did. I was uh, I was fortunate enough to do a show um, mm, at an airport. At an airport. <laughs> <laughs> or nearby an airport. <laughs> Probably far too close to an airport to actually do a show. Yes. Uh -oh. Probably would be advised to not do a show so close to the airport. <laughs> Yet you did. Um, yeah, no, I was, I, uh, there was a show put together that was called From the Second City. And it was at the University of Chicago. And it was sort of like a best up. And so they took, um, Bernie picked, handpicked a group of people. And they wanted, you know, what was old school. Bruce Jarko was there. That's where I met Bruce. But it was the first time, actually, so I don't know whether to thank Bernie or blame Bernie. <laughs> uh, because it was the first time Pasquese, David Pasquese and I worked together. Oh, um, cool. We knew each yeah. other. But it was the first time we were ever thrown together. And we, I mean, it was, the, I, when I look back on that and think about that, I don't think about the show at all. Um, we had We had the most... <laughs> the most fun um, and Kevin Crowley um, yeah it was were you doing classic Second City sketches we was were, it one we of those were. yeah from the Second City um, yeah but there was just so many there's a there's a great and it was in the middle of winter too and there's a um, there's a blackout at Second City uh, about Moby Dick and there's a guy um, standing and driving you know um, steering the boat and somebody comes out and says ahoy um, <laughs> have you seen the great white whale and he goes yeah I killed it so if you know Moby Dick <laughs> that he killed it, it's not a good sign anyway <laughs> <laughs> so what Dave had we would change we would take turns doing that role and so it was no one and Dave and I and Kevin Crowley and all of us but we were Crowley had the role one night and Dave had the role one night and we would st we started throwing water up there Cause he was, oh, right, because he's being attacked. He's in a right, storm. So we would throw one. Uh. Sure, sure. <laughs> and then I think it was Crowley, Kevin Crowley, and David and I had gone out and gotten snow. <laughs> like, you know, 10 <laughs> snowballs apiece. And he was up there, and it was just like, th -th 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 -th. Um, but we had a blast doing that. But, yeah, Bernie was, um, uh, I, I, I wish I had more time with him. Um, but he, he was always um, uh, and really, really supportive of um, – of, of, of smart comedy and using your brain and, and playing at the top of your intelligence. Mm -hmm. And I think you get really, really funny stuff. And I'm not the only one who's not going to break a new ground here. Um, when you, I'm not the, the brainiest guy when it comes to improvising or even talking, but, um, you know, uh, Bernie was one of those guys that taught you, you know what you know. Exactly. And all of your characters mm -hmm. know what you know. And then right. Dell was coming from that school too. And, uh, but yeah, Bernie was, 
Um, I'm, but, but that's the other thing, too. I'm not a guy who's in a position to talk about that man. Um, I had some time with him, but there was there's so many more people that, that uh, spent much more time with him than I ever did. I was lucky to spend a little bit of time with him. He hired Gilda. He hired Bill Murray. He hired Harold Ramis. He hired Dan Aykroyd. And uh, who from that old gang is your inspiration? Or who do you look uh, up to? Uh, Harold Ramis, to me, is is hands down one of the most, uh, and again, this is not news, well-rounded. I mean, you're talking about a guy that, that writes it, performs it, directs it. I mean, he's just like one stop shopping when it comes to that. But, but, uh, and I've, I've had the privilege to meet the guy um, a handful of times and spend some time with him. A nicer man you will not meet. And cool. um, very, very funny. Yeah, very, that's very always funny. good to hear. Yeah, yeah. Like Karen met yeah. Bill Murray, mm-hmm. and Karen loves mm-hmm. Bill Murray. And Bill Murray was great when she met him. And that's so key. It's so crucial, you know, when you meet those people. Yeah, I was saying earlier that majority of the people that are from Second City or around Second City in that, in that world, they're great people. But I mean, also comedians in general, I don't, and, um, or my experience has been, um, they're, they're all pretty cool, you know, um, because we're all sort of, I think we're all sort of fucked up and got a really We're all sort of damaged and know how to mm-hmm. make the best way. out of a situation. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I think there's, um, yeah, I mean, when I was little, my dad said, you know, um, you can be anything you want to be. And I was dumb enough to believe him. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> but it's sort of that thing, you know, where you sort of have all this, Weird, fucked up shit. Each of everybody does, but mm-hmm. then you sort of use that, um, um, yeah, and find funny in it. Yeah. Well, I got to ask a question because uh, you, you uh, currently like the factory and and uh, Merck and Pino, You know, you're working with the same crew of people out here in L.A. Mm-hmm. But with the first Second City show I saw was you know you and Amy Stars and Stephen Colbert and Paul Danello, mm-hmm. and then. You know, a short time after that, there's Exit 57, and a short time after that, the Stranger Can- It's it's cool that you keep your groups together, you know, that uh, yeah. and that Chicago comedians, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think when you when going through Second City, you find a pack of people that you think that you find thinks the same shit's funny as you do. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, and and I have to, a side note, Adam. How when was that? When you and you came to the show was God uh, knows how long. Ago, Ninety two. Right? <laughs> wow. Ninety three. So, I think you were in the first two shows I saw. But there, so yeah. I was at Second City, and that's because we were. Get, I was going to say we left right after that. Right after that, yeah. yeah. And then Exit Fifty Seven popped up on TV. Yeah, we actually went to New York. Me and Paul and Amy went to New York to do a uh, a play called Stitches uh, that David Sedaris wrote based on characters we did at Second hmm. City. Cool. Yeah, it was a good time. That's cool. cool. All right. Well, um, if you happen to be. In the right festival, you'll get a chance to see Merck and Penal. Right, the right festival. Hopefully, uh, everyone will get to see it soon enough. It's because it, yeah. it is a, a good pilot in that, right? You meet a bunch of characters, mm-hmm. and a lot of times, you know, when those in those pilots to to a TV show, you can't always get what they're all about right away, or they're not right. making funny right away. So you meet TJ, Chief J's character, yep. but then the next time you see him, he's hilarious, yep. and you know that. Okay, the next time I see all these characters, going to be hilarious, and I think you could have a great one, two, three, four, five seasons, however many. I have to yeah. based on what you set up in this pilot. So good on you. Well, thank you. Has yeah. this been entertaining? I can't tell. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. been okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> by the way, I don't know if uh, spoilers for the first minute of uh, Merck and Penal. What we mentioned, Larry Joe Campbell earlier, but <laughs> yes. Well, that's the thing too. We want to kill somebody famous in every episode. <laughs> <laughs> Killed Indeed right does. off the bat, yeah. like literally that the first awesome. minute. <laughs> Larry Joe Campbell helped me win a trip to Barbados on the game show Pyramid. What? Really? Yeah. Yeah. He was my celebrity across the way. Uh, that was the first time I ever met him. We and wanted Matthew McConaughey for that role, by the way. Yeah. Um, I wanted. To, oh, just like the beginning <laughs> just of Police Squad, like a, a person gets I killed. I wanted to g- kill him. <laughs> so bad. Just Not, in general? No, 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 no. Oh. It's just that you know, hey man, I, you know, I just. Uh, <laughs> Hey man, I'm vacuum. I got a vacuum cleaner on the moon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, just that he just—that's the name of his album, right? It is. Yeah. <laughs> hey man, look at me. I'm, it's mostly flute. And drum. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how we got here, but yes. <laughs> I don't yes. know either. <laughs> but Larry Joe Campbell. Also, I went to Second City just to visit uh, people in Detroit one time, and he was on stage. And I never like being pulled up on stage because it's kind of weird when you're a performer. You feel weird because you don't know how to be a normal person. 
And so uh, I was trying to blend in, but they went out and they grabbed me out of the audience to go up and do something. And my prize was getting my picture taken with him. And he pulled his shirt up over his tummy and made it as big as possible. And I had to rub it. I still, I, I somewhere I have the photograph of me rubbing his tummy, and that's my prize. You didn't have to rub it. <laughs> Awkward <Winner. laughs> is the word. Awkward. It was enjoyable. Uh, Mitch, hey, this has been entertaining. Yes. Fantastic. There you go. Yes, and you've lost weight because of the sweating. I have. <laughs> Okay, it's a little hot in here. I'm getting a lot of grief for that. But, you know, we have equipment running. I'm going to have to pop some Vivants, and we'll all just speed around the room. <laughs> some Vivants? Uh, hey, this has been the, the Movie Showcast with the Movie Guys. Uh, be sure to check us out at the Movie Guys on Twitter. Uh, TheMovieGuys.net is our home for all things wacky. Uh, thanks to Mitch Rouse and to Steve Schultz, who helped us write a bunch of the stuff for the show. And good night.